Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, one of my favorite authors, and in Protestant and Reformed Publishing, or as it's known now, PNR Publishing, History of Western Philosophy and Theology by John Frame. When I was studying for a PhD in Christian philosophy, I was acquainted with John Frame. So John Piper, D.A. Carson, Vern Poitras, all show this. I've just done a review on Frame's systematic theology which is really good this is a further outstanding achievement on its author's part my admiration for john work grows and grows this is j.i packer this actually won a gold medallion award from evangelical publishing i will tell you it has been my experience when you see a book that gets a gold medallion from the evangelical uh, book Publishers Association, usually, not every time, it is a fantastic book. And I don't think this is going to be any exception to that. And you can see by all the people recommending it, Eugene Merrill, J.I. Packer, Van Hooser, Lilback, and all this. So the philosophy in the Bible, Greek philosophy, early Christian philosophy, medieval philosophy, early modern thought, theology and the Enlightenment, Kant and the successors, 19th century theology, Nietzsche, pragmatism, phenomenology, existential, 20th century liberal theology, Part 1 and Part 2, language philosophy like the Tractatus Logico Philosophicus with Wittgenstein, recent Christian philosophy, which there is some great stuff, Appendix C, the ontological argument, transcendental arguments, determinism, chance and freedom, self refuting statements. And so has Carl F. Henry in here, philosophy in the Bible, just show you. And so let me just say this. If you were to just sit down and read a couple pages of this a day, within about a year, you would have gone through. Now, there's a, there's a nine volume set by a Catholic priest that I really recommend that I've started reading. And they always told me, my philosophy professor in college told me that this is the guy, if you want to read from a Christian perspective, He's the guy, and I can't call his name right now. But if you were to just sit down, so this is including the appendix and everything, 869 pages, 875 with some things at the back. Um, let's see what just the text, annotated bibliography, glossary, a Van Til reconsidered. So about 750. Yeah, so right. I mean, just say a couple, you read two pages a day for a year. You will have gone from a Christian perspective in a broad sense of that term. I'm apostolic Christian. He is not apostolic Christian. Um, from stem to stern in an amazing time. And I may just do that. You know, the making of books, there is no end. We've got a new podcast, Biblical Archaeology Today, work on YouTube channel, still growing, booming. Thank the Lord for that. And, you know, pastoring and writing and preaching out, teaching out, a lot to do. But this would be a book that I would enjoy reading. And and it's written in a level that most anybody could read. And it's like, you know, you have the Stanford Dictionary of Philosophy and all this, but uh, this would be good. I'm wondering, I'm trying to think who wrote Warranted Christian Belief. And he's a great Christian philosopher. But something like this. And why would you read this? Well, first of all, you might, instead of watching TV and corrupting your mind, you might just want to do this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or uh, you might just want to learn these things. Or you might, if God leads you to read it, it may be to help other people that are in these type things. But this is a great, great book. I couldn't recommend it highly enough. A History of Western Philosophy and Theology on what little I know at this point, but I haven't read it from stem to stern. And I'm sure I'll have disagreements because there are disagreements John Frame and I have theologically. And so I just stick with the word. Amen. God bless. I'll talk with you later in Jesus' name.